Welcome back to my channel. So in my last video, I said that I would show you, or I would point out how I uh, straighten out bent resin pieces. Um, there are two methods that are, are mostly useful for straightening, straightening out resin pieces that were cast and are, are warped. Um, depending on what you're working with, the, you know, they have different benefits. So um, for something small, like this piece here, um, this peg was bent off just a little bit. For something small like that, and there's not a whole lot of detail on this either, this, the heat gun thing, is probably the best idea. This is, I, I don't even know what this was for. Um, yeah, as you can tell, I've pretty much worn off everything because I've had this thing forever. Um, but it's a little, just a little heat gun. You can use a hair dryer. Um, I use this because I had it, um, and I've had it for a long, long, long time. Catch with heat gun, right? The heat gun will get things very, very warm in a very, very small space. So if you're working on a small area, like if you're working on just that, um, that's great because it'll just get that piece and you won't have to worry about this deforming and you don't have to worry about the heat getting, you know, you, you're able to get this space warmer faster than the heat can propagate up the material, which would then make this whole thing warp. So that's, I, that's the ideal thing of this. The trick with that is if your surface has detail. So in that case, this. See all this nice little rock detail. Um, if you are not careful, that detail will then begin to melt and it will then, right? Um, so that's the catch. The other method is you use warm water, which will then warm up the whole of the object and allow you to move the object, you know, um, the larger pieces without risking the centralized softening of detail. So th in this piece of the video, I'm going to use this and I'm just going to bend this. I'm going to show you how that works. Um, I've already done that piece because I was testing it just to make sure that what I knew was right. Um, but I'll use it on this and, and show you roughly what that means. Um, and then the second half, I'll switch over to the, the sink and I apologize ahead of time for the grossness. It is the basement sink. Um, but, and I'll show you how the, the water thing works. Now, I will apologize. This is loud and it's barely working, but it's, you know, it is working. Um, what you do is you take this and you move it quickly back and forth over the piece you want to bend. Right? So if you have a piece, you can hold this and just do this. Or you can hold the piece and do this, either one. I'm doing this because this waving in front of your face is a little less distracting. Do not just do this. Um, that's really hot. But you just do this to get it warmed up. And you will feel it start to get warm. It'll take a little bit. And you, know, you will find that your hands become uncomfortable. And that's a good thing because that tells you you're getting it a little warm. So you do this, you do this, you do this, you do this, until it starts to get warm. There. See that? That's what I needed. Now I'm working from the back because it's allowing me to do this without affecting the, the surface detail. Now that it's warm, it doesn't take much for me to really keep it warm and get whatever twist I'm looking for. And then let's go ahead and go back to this. Let's kind of twist that back in, right? So if I want to keep bending, 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 I can do that or I can work from the back. And because, you know, the majority of the resistance is at the back, that's where I want my heat applied. So you want to make the part that's actually going to move be the part that you want. Now you see what's happened there is that split, that split there, because it was cool, it got a chance to cool off. So there we go. There, I'm going to turn that off so I'm not trying to talk over the noise. So because this is the part of the, of the piece I wanted to actually stretch, it was important that this be warmer than this, okay? Um, because if, this, if I work the other way around where I kept the heat on the front piece, then this actually would go soft if I just let this sit. Now, now this is hard. Um, 
you can see these splits. This is what happens because of the temperature difference. Because this was warm enough to work, this was able to cool off. So I see that. I get that split. You can see, you know, at the cross section as to why. Um, but that's the short version of, of how you use a heat gun to do this. Um, on, you know, I will now skip over to the sink. And this is where if I wanted to move this whole piece and twist it, you know, make a big pretzel out of it, um, I would use the sink and hot water. And I will now skip over to the hot water piece and we will we'll go through that technique. All right, so this is the other way of bending resin now. Um, again, no, apology number one, we are at my laundry sink, which means it's ugly. We're in the basement, it's blah. Normally I would do this somewhere else, um, but I have really no way to film um, at, the, at the other sink. So we're going to do this here. So I apologize for the background, deal with it. It's an old, 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 old sink in the basement. Now, you will see I have a bucket of cold, or a bucket of water um, with ice in it. And that is simply because I want to be able to, you know, when I make the bends, I'm going to want to make the bends and then chill it so that, you know, blowing out, so basically to stop the, to, to cool this thing down. So um, I'm going to try to do this. This is, I'm not going to be able to actually see what I'm doing. I'm going to be trying to do this in the view. Um, so as we look at this one, this one's all torqued and twisted. This one here, this is a little more simple. This one's just torqued that little bit. So really with this one, all I need to do is flatten that out and just twist it back. So this is how we do it. We get hot water going. Now, you do not want boiling water. Um, and this is, you, you want to use the heat of the water to get the temperature of the subject up. And I'm doing it this way. I'm actually going in and putting it right there to get this temperature up. Now, because again, because this is such a large surface, I'm using this method rather than the, the hot glue gun or the hot gun because this gets more of the thing soft. There, now I can feel it being soft. So here, I'm going to go ahead and twist. And I wanna untorque it there chill it there. and it's still a little twisted so i need to twist it back a little so we'll go back in here and it doesn't take long this is you know hot water coming straight out of the thing and again i apologize you're hearing the pump because we're right next to the well pump because i've got water flowing i'm hoping you guys can hear me off now and then I'm just going to twist that back okay. and that's better that is more straight than it was that's about what I'm after now we got to deal with this one um, this one's a mess so I'm going to start I'm going to do this in pieces I'm going to pick a part of it <clears throat> so I'm going to pick this first I'm going to pick the landing skid, which is a mess. I'm going to do it first. See if I can flatten that out first. Let's see if we can get that to flatten out. I think I want to do, because I'm having a real hard time getting to the cold water. So I'm going to actually move this cold water to a point that you can't see. It's gonna be over here. Um, but at least that'll get it closer. So Neil, I've gotten that twist out, which is good. So now what I need to do is get the, the, the back torque, so the side torque of this. And I'm kind of trying to isolate that to that particular part of the joint. there and then I'm kind of doing that to get that back in pull it off a bit 
better. Still a little twisted, so. <clears throat> so, the short version is we just continue to do this. <clears throat> we work in pieces. Um, you know, if you have a giant, a very, very large piece, um, I'd have a basin of warm water and I'd let it soak so that I could move the whole piece. The problem with that, right? So if the whole piece, I've got one of these big resin pieces, it, you know, if it's soft enough that you can bend, then it's gonna bend. It's going to do that. And then that's going to affect your result when you, when you try to be finished. When you try to be finished. When you're trying to be finished, you know, you'll have this, this big massive piece that, you know, as you pick it up, it kind of bleh, right? So you, that's why I try to work in sections. So that's when the heat gun is, is better. In this case, with what I'm doing, I can, this is more what I'm after. I need to fix that again. So, and this is a problem with, the resin in this, this piece was allowed to cure before. So that's where it wants to be. And what you're doing is you're deforming it by, by heating it up, but you're not changing the cure. And this is what I've, what I've found in some of the resin. And I could be totally talking smoke, you know, blowing smoke out my backside. But what I have found is if it heats up, it's gonna wanna go back to its original deformed shape. Yeah, so I fixed that again. Now I just need to fix that twist. So I'm gonna try and isolate that there to these pieces. And that is, and the thing, like I said, the thing with the heat gun, if I were to use a heat gun on this, it would heat up the, the resin at the surface and it would make the detail go soft. And that's something I'm trying to avoid. That's that. That's that. That's twisting back again. But that's better. That's a better result. Now all I need to do is a little bit here on that ankle to twist that back into a little more you know, parallel, parallel to the ground location. And that'll be that. So you know, like I said, I, there, there are, there are, now that I've looked and, and used a, a decent type of search in, or search keyword, um, reshaping resin pieces, by the way, is the key, is the search parameters I use. Um, there are videos out there to do this. And this is just, again, this is how, this is me learning, right? Um, like I said before, this is, this is what I do. I figure things out and I try them. And if they work, they work. If they don't, well, then we move on to try something else. 